All right, we are back with another CCG unboxing today. Uh, today we are going to be taking a look at the Tatsuo Showdown uh, Kickstarter release of the two-player starter deck. Uh, they just finished the Kickstarter. It funded just over goal, um, and the production has started on getting backers their cards. Um, I worked on helping with like proofreading some of the effects in this game, some balancing things, helping with writing the rulebook, uh, as well as kind of being the judge for the game and some of the card design. Um, so I'm excited to see our work come to fruition too. Uh, this is the two-player starter deck. It's come ahead of the boxes. The boxes are still in production. I backed for one of these and a couple of booster boxes, so I thought it would be fun to kind of open this up and see what is inside. The box, as you can see just from spinning it around here, it looks fantastic. It's a really nice gloss. It's a thick, uh, I mean it's cardboard, but it's a really thick uh, cord board and looks great. The art looks really good. We've got the two kind of main characters of this battle faction going on here. It's time to show down, it says here. Two player competitive starter deck. Um, you've got Torch as well as the new blue dragon that is introduced in this deck. Um, black versus white lotus. Uh, annoyingly, this uh, happened with um, the, this happened with a production error. It was spelled right in the sample that they sent, and then they spelled it wrong on this. Whatever. Doesn't really matter too much. The box itself still looks fine. The back art, uh, as you can see when I was flipping around, looks fantastic. You've got the black and white lotus flowers floating in the water there. You've got some really nice, like, spectral patterns going on here. Uh, they look really good. We'll just kind of slide this open and get started with the unboxing. There are two decks in here, so I don't want this to take too long. Uh, it's just kind of a slide out tray. And I believe it comes all the way out of here. It does, yeah. So, yeah, as you can see, that box is real, I mean, it's real sturdy. This is as well. The cards don't come, like, cellophane within the box. This comes uh, cellophane, but I opened that up just for, like, speed within the video. But the two decks themselves come sort of uh, just sleeved with the little wrap that you get. Take the two boxes out of here. Oh, wow, the, the inside of that looks really good. I hadn't actually seen the full like production sample of this myself. Um, Ray the Greater the game had, but uh, I had not seen it till it was done. I kind of wanted it to be a Kickstarter surprise for myself as well. So it's cool to see that. Uh, we'll start with the Black Lotus deck. Um, that's the kind of iconic, you know, magic card that everyone knows and stuff. So we'll kind of start with even the little bit of something that someone might know. As you can see, there's some cards in the back here that have kind of a different look to them. Uh, these are energy cards. These are played when you have three different zones that you can play warriors in, and uh, those zones can be charged through different effects. Those charges give you different powers within the game, and these cards represent the amount of charges that you have within those zones, one through four on these. Um, this features the Ugly Professor and his little cat friend, Lil Tass. Uh, the Ugly Professor runs the Tasso Showdown tournament, um, and is kind of like the main villain of the initial kind of part of the arc. So it's cool to see him featured on the energy cards here. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. Um, you are allowed a ten card energy deck, so it's cool that you have these. Um, the thing about the ten card energy deck, the nice thing is the only reason that a cap exists is all it does is it caps the amount of total energy you can have in play. If you ever, for some reason, were to have all 10 of your energy cards out, you couldn't charge more energy. So we'll get those out of the way. I'll kind of put them back in the box. Let's take a look at the deck itself. So off the top, we've got Kasim of the Black Lotus. Um, now, uh, I have gone through on this channel before some other Tatsuo Showdown cards, and some of the Black Lotus cards were included in that. Um, and these have been, the text has been updated, they've had kind of some templating changes since now that they're the kind of final released uh, product. Mike Kasim's got a little ding on the corner, it's alright. Uh, one of the newest things that they added was uh, these little red and green icons in the corner of the cards. Before, 
when you summoned a card, or it's called calling a card in this game, when you called a warrior into play, you had to pay a certain amount of your life based on their life, and they were worth a certain number of points when they died. Um, now, instead of that being like a strict rule, before it was like seven life and less cost one, uh, seven to nine, or like 7.5 to nine cost two, anything over nine cost three. Uh, now it's been altered to be kind of based on like individual power levels. So like where this card would have originally cost two based on his like nine life rules, uh, he costs three here, but he's a pretty good card. Um, he is, however, worth one body count when he dies instead of the like two or three that he would have been before. So that's kind of the one of the balancing changes that they've done to uh, that they, I should say we, but um, the Tesso Showdown has done to the the game. I think it's brought a lot of um, nuance to the game and makes for, uh, it, it allows cards to be really, really strong in certain ways. Like you can have cards that would have normally been way too strong based on the original rules and now they can just have a super high cost or a super high uh, body count that you lose if they die. Uh, so that balances out that way. So here it looks like we get three copies of Kasim. Um, you're, up, you're allowed to have up to four copies of a card in the deck. Um, this one, however, you're only allowed to have three of. Um, this one you can only have three of as well. We get Kakamuri. Kekamuri of the Black Lotus. Uh, Kasim is sort of the leader of the Black Lotus tribe, Kekamuri, and then this character here, Lily, are two of his like underling trainees. Um, Princess Lily here, you're allowed to have one of. Um, this is her kind of as her younger self. I imagine we'll find her older self within the deck as well. Um, but she has a lot of kick um, synergies. There are some like Lotus Lilies backflip kick and stuff that exist, and she kind of grabs some of those, which is cool. And here's Torch, her uh, familiar, if you will. He's real small here, but he's grown up a little bit on this card. He grew up alongside her. And you're allowed to have two copies of him in the deck as well, so it's cool that you get both copies. Uh, we get four copies of Lotus Soldier. This is a new card that was introduced for this starter deck. Um, you can, uh, once returned, you can create a, sol a Lotus Soldier token, um, which is basically just another body. It can attack and has its own stats. Um, so this just kind of lets you help flood your board space with uh, warriors. There was a new zone added in the kind of final version of the game called the Outer Zone 2, which exists in a space kind of between players, and you're allowed to place cards into that. Um, if you were to think of it in like Yu-Gi-Oh terms, it's not quite the same as this, but it's kind of like the like Link Monster zones. You can sort of fill those slots with stuff, and that gives you extra warrior spaces. Um, you've got Grandmaster Kuhn of the Lotus. Uh, he is sort of the the leader before they split um, when it was just the Lotus clan uh, there's been you know some civil war for a while but he represents kind of when they were together but uh, you, you can have one of him in, in the deck it's cool that you get the one copy of him it allows you to kind of mix these decks together to make uh, something a little more customized as you go You've got four copies of the Black Lotus 6-inch Punch. This is one of the iconic cards within this deck. Um, it can't be evaded, Kyushu, Haki, or blocked. Those are like four different types of defense. There's like six or something total, so it's really hard to block this attack. If you can't, if you get hit by this attack, uh, you can't attack the next turn. So it's just really uh, debilitating to get hit with this. It also does two damage, which is pretty good. Um, you've got the Quan Quad Combo, uh, the Quan Quad Combo Punch. Four copies of that as well. Um, this lets uh, one of your warriors attack uh, for they they attack, and then it's considered chain four. Uh, as you have attacks that are chainable, this one's unchainable, but um, some of them are chainable, which means after you perform them, you can roll dice to uh, try to use another attack. And as you do, if you successfully keep stringing attacks together, your chain gets longer, and that activates certain effects. This just puts you at chain four by using it. It's kind of like you hit them four times. Uh, 
Um, we've got four copies of the Lotus Lily Backflip Kick. This is one I kind of mentioned before. Um, the art on this one is a little bit tucked in under the frame, but um, that's Lily there doing uh, her, her flip. During your clash phase, if this is in your dead zone, you can orbit it, um, which means kind of like RFG, remove it from the game, exile, banish, whatever you want to say. Um, so you can use this attack for two, and then in your discard pile, you can play it again for three. So that's pretty good. A reusable attack is great. Getting something that your warriors can uh, perform attacks with is powerful. Then you've got the Black Lotus Technique. Uh, you've got four full copies of this. This is... Uh, also considered White Lotus Technique uh, for cards that want that card. Um, but while it's face up, your Lotus Class Warriors can't be blocked. Which sounds crazy, but as I said earlier, there are like multiple kinds of defense. So there are plenty of other ways to stop an attack besides just blocking it. But it does eliminate one of the ways to be stopped. Um, and then it says your Lotus Class Warriors can use Black Lotus cards. It just opens up some of the uh, things your Lotus cards can do. One copy of Gift of Yin. This is limit one per deck. Uh, this guy here, uh, he was actually a really early uh, supporter of the game. He, um, like his, his like Discord name is like TN, um, but he, this was a, like a Patreon card at one point uh, that he got for backing like a high tier where we got a custom art of him on the card. But uh, both players draw a card while damage reduces zero for the turn. Uh, it's basically like a fog type effect, but you get to draw a card and just slow the game down if you're stuck. Then we've got Renju Ring Malicious Restraint. When this card's activated, it remains on the field and your opponent cannot declare an attack. As you can imagine uh, why that's good. Describe this card after your opponent's second end phase. So it stays in play for two turns. Uh, limits attacks. There are cards that can destroy uh, legendary item cards, so it's possible to get rid of this early, but for uh, while you have it, it's two turns where your opponent can't attack. You get three copies of Divine Strike, which is all you are allowed. Destroy a card in the Legend Zone and destroy it. Target a card in the Legend Zone, sorry. This card would be one of those. This is the kind of card I was talking about that could deal with this. These new cards are kind of slippery on the pile. Uh, we got Ninja Sense, one copy of this. You're allowed to have three of it, but we only get one. Um, you add a ninja card from your deck to your hand, except this card. Uh, you can orbit this card from your dead zone to activate the effect of a ninja defense card in your dead zone. Uh, that's pretty great. Um, and it's restricted, which means you can only use this effect on one copy of this card. So say you had three of these in your discard pile, you couldn't do that three times in the same turn. However, though, uh, Getting a free ninja card out of your deck, there are plenty of cards with ninja in the title in this deck, and uh, yeah, that's awesome. Would have been cooler to get uh, more than one, but it is with it. It does exist in the actual set too, so the the likelihood of opening one of those out of a box is pretty high too. Four copies of Ninja Roll. Uh, here's one of the searchable cards. This is a great defensive card. Um, it can stop an attack or a target, uh, and then you can use this effect to play a defense card from your discard pile as well. So these you get a block with twice. Four calibrated counter, still the best counter in the game. When you're, uh, when a warrior you control is attacked with a physical air or area attack, or you're attacked directly, or yet this is the only counter in the game that can stop a direct attack, uh, which normally most things cannot do. And if you're targeted by an effect or an ability, negate that effect or ability, which is also good. You're only allowed four counters in a deck. Um, it's a strict card type. It's a defensive card, but once you use them, it ends your opponent's turn. So this one is uh, incredible. It stops just about everything and ends the turn. We've got two copies of Ninja Sense, mindful of your surroundings. Your opponent activates a card effect or ability. Target a warrior your opponent controls for one damage. If successful, negate the activation. This is awesome. You get two of this in a deck, you get both copies, and when your opponent attacks, or sorry, uses an effect, uh, you just get a deal of damage to their opponent, or to that warrior. And uh, if they don't have a way to stop that damage from happening, you also get to negate the activation of the card effect. Really good. And then we finish this deck out with four copies of Lotus Lily Volley Flip. Now here's a Lily uh, grown up more. 
I thought we would get a copy of her grown up within the deck too, um, but she's at least on a couple of cards. When a warrior you control is targeted, Paris. Uh, if successful, you may minus one Clash Gauge. Um, Clash Gauge builds up as you do different effects or as you kill uh, your opponent's warriors, you get Clash Gauge for those uh, warriors being defeated. But then your opponent discards a card from their hand. Uh, pretty good. So it's a defensive card, stops an attack, and then or stops a target or an attack that targets, and then you pay a Clash Gauge to make them discard a card. That is the Black Lotus deck. Let's take a quick look at the White Lotus deck. We're about, what, 15 minutes into this video? The first few minutes were a uh, kind of explanation of what the product is, so I'm hoping this one will take about 10. Let's see how quick we can get through this one. I know there are some cards that are uh, the same between decks, like defensively and stuff, so there are some things we'll get to go through in this deck pretty quickly. So here we've got Moki of the White Lotus. Um, she's one of the characters on the uh, front of the card here, or on the front of the box. But she, um, you're allowed to have three of her in a deck, and you do get three copies. Um, she's also new to this deck. Um, she was not previously included in any of the, like, Lotus cards that had been released, so it's awesome to see this one come out. Um, when this warrior destroys a warrior, you can add a Lotus card from your deck to your hand, which is super good. Uh, you, with the turn this card is played, your opponent can't activate cards in their legend zone that turn, uh, so they can't use those defensive cards like this, because um, these get played face down in that legend zone. They're like trap cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! They can't activate anything back there. They can't activate their Lotus effects or anything like that. And then uh, while you control a Lotus, or while you control uh, a Lotus technique, you deal two damage, or double damage, sorry, um, with your White Lotus effect cards. Here we've got Kaona of the White Lotus, three copies of her, who is also limited to three. Um, she, on top of that, only you can only have one of this on the field at a time. Oh, sorry, my camera's not focusing on the text of that card super well. Now, see, here's one that was kind of the opposite of uh, the Kasim from before. She's only worth one body count, or one, she only costs one armor to play, but if she dies, she's worth three body count. Uh, if you get to five body count, you just lose the game. So, uh, she's really risky, but she has some really good effects and helps set up some good plays. Um, when this warrior's played, add X white lotus cards from your deck to your hand, where X is the number of lotus techniques you have. Um, so you can get pretty uh, crazy with the amount of cards you can add to your hand with by playing this. And then you can lotus loop this card, um, which lets you send it away and bring it back to kind of replay it. Prince Zuban, limit one per deck here. Um, a new character uh, within the Lotus lore as well. He is part of the White Lotus, and we don't know too much about him yet, but uh, we'll find out more soon enough. He does have a little bit of flavor text here. Let's see what this says. Uh, your sacrifices have kept me alive. Pawns are used to achieve victory. Not a super nice guy. Um, but you can uh, destroy two of your Lotus cards to target and destroy one of your opponent's cards. Uh, so as you create those like Lotus Soldier tokens and things like that, you can just sort of sacrifice them to uh, blow up your opponent's more important cards. Then we've got Kizan of the White Lotus, four copies of him. He is also a newer character within the White Lotus portion of the lore. We've gotten a little bit of the Black Lotus uh, introduction in Lily, Kasim, and Kekamuri. They have, uh, that's been posted within the like Lotus Clan uh, Instagram page, but the White Lotus we don't know too much about yet. They're a little more mysterious. This guy here, while you control a Lotus technique, when a Lotus Warrior class, uh, so Warrior class, so basically this here, when a Lotus Warrior you control is a, uh, ooh, sorry. Um, when a Lotus Warrior class is, gotta get that in front of my face. When a Lotus Warrior class you control's attack is successful, uh, stun the defending warrior until the end phase. So if one of your other Lotus Warriors performs a successful attack, the defender gets stunned. When you're stunned, you can't defend, you can't perform other actions and things like that, so it just sort of shuts them down. It's like paralyzed in Pokemon, kind of. 
Uh, once per turn, if you control a Lotus Technique, this warrior can attack up to two targets for two damage. That's pretty good. Being able to attack more than one card at a time is always great. Oh, this is cool. Um, we get a copy of Grandmaster Coon in this deck, too. Uh, that's That'll be fun. It, I guess it sort of makes sense thematically, right? That each of these Lotus decks has kind of the leader of the Lotus within it. Uh, we get two copies of Aros, the Water Lotus Spirit. Um, I forgot his name because he's new. Torch has been around a long time. He's one of the like original Tasso cards, but now Oros is new to the uh, White Lotus clan. It does kind of a similar effect. Um, you can have him leave play to add Lotus Warriors from your deck to your hand, which helps you keep your uh, future plays set up. And uh, while you have him in play and a Lotus Technique, Lotus class where you control can't be targeted or attacked by effects. So you have to look for abilities that can perform those attacks. That's pretty good. Then we got Lotus Lily Somersault Kick. This is a slightly different version of the kick that we had uh, in the previous deck. Uh, this one, however, a nice thing with this is this is chainable and it can, uh, it can chain with cards that have spin in the name. So you can set up some fun stuff with if you're like com uh, combi combining these two decks, you can add this and the Lotus Lily backflip kick together and they chain off of each other because that card can only chain with uh, spin cards while it's in the discard pile. So this is a cool one to combo with that if you get into a little bit more deck customization. Then you've got Doku Butsuken, uh, four copies of that. This is a poison effect basically that gives uh, Kaona is the iconic character that does it, but it just lets one of your uh, warriors perform an attack, and then if it hits, they can uh, poison their opponent. Poison uh, acts like it does in most games that you'd think about it, where it uh, just deals damage at the end of each turn uh, to your opponent. Then we've got Spin Kick, F-T-R-H-K. Uh, it's Spin Kick, Fake to Right High Kick. Uh, we get four copies of that. It attacks for four damage, that's pretty good. The Warrior cannot block Haki or Kyushu, uh, your opponent's next attack. So that's the kind of trade-off. You get a huge damage attack, but you get really hard. It's, you're kind of, you put yourself in a compromised position by doing this attack so your opponent is it's easier for your opponent to hit you back but if this card is set uh you may activate it as a warrior's attack target a warrior your opponent controls if successful they cast off a card from their hand which is discard and the target receives four damage so uh this card can be played face down in your uh back row in your legend zone and if it uh if it were then you can activate it as an attack and uh, target where your opponent controls, and they discard a card and take some damage, which is good. The nice thing, uh, I mean, it's the same four damage, but you don't get the uh, hurt from being, it doesn't make it hard to block if you use it as, as the kind of trap form. However, you can't activate a set card the same turn you played it. So you'd have to set this, your opponent would get a turn, and then it would come back to you, and then on your turn you could use this again as an attack. So it kind of depends how safe you think you are. Your opponent has plenty of ways, uh, or could have plenty of ways to disrupt your back row. So sometimes it's worth considering if you're going to just lose this before that happens. We get four copies then too of White Lotus Technique. Um, same kind of effect as the other one. You can use White Lotus effects. You start at chain two. Pretty good. You get Gift of Yin again, as well as Renju Ring. You get the same Divine Strikes. Oh, this is awesome. So you get two Ninja Sense in this deck, and you get one in the other, which means if you combine these, you get your full place out of this, which is awesome. That's a really cool inclusion. We still get our four Ninja Rolls. This is a really good defensive card. Uh, one of the better defensive cards within the set, period. And the fact that you can recall it uh, with this is awesome. Four Calibrated Encounters, because of course you did. This is a new one to this deck here. White Lotus Dokubutsu Clone. You get three of this per deck, and you do get both, or all three copies. 
When a shield type Lotus Warrior you control is targeted or attacked, you can evade. If the attack is targeting, uh, if the attack or targeting is a physical type, uh, target your opponent's warrior and it gets poisoned. <laughs> That's awesome. Most of the attacks in this uh, set are physical based in some capacity, so um, as long as you can evade that attack, you can still get them. Uh, you can still poison them on the crackback, so that's really strong. And then finally, two copies of Ninja Sense, mindful of your surroundings, um, just like we had seen in the previous deck, and still searchable by the Ninja Sense card from before. Well, that is everything that we get in the two-player Lotus, uh, black versus white Lotus deck, the official Kickstarter launched version of this game. Uh, like I said, the booster boxes are still in production um, and are a couple months out, but the starters were done early, so they uh, Ray decided to get these out to the people who backed the game early. Additionally, um, we received some uh, promo cards uh, for like stretch goal kind of things. So I got two copies of Fjorder Krakenson here. Uh, he is one of the Viking class warriors. They are, as you can imagine, a Viking tribe. Uh, they don't have a connection to the like energy force that this world shares. Um, it's called cheese and energy, and they don't have that. Um, so they their like connection or whatever is each other. They power each up. They power each other up by having more of them in play, and um, you know their brotherhood or whatever. So they play a little bit more uh, uniquely to some of the other tribes. These stamps on the front are called Tassuo stamps, um, and they are worth money. Um, I mean, not like for collector's sake per se, but the you can redeem Tassuo stamps in the shop uh, as like store credit, basically. I think they're worth like $10 a stamp uh, or roughly, um, so they're worth uh, they're worth holding on to, and the fact that each one of these comes with one is cool. I just thought I'd open that up and give you the full uh, shot of him there. There's a lot of text on him, but he looks great as the, as a full art. He's worth uh, he costs two to play, but he's worth four body count if he dies. So dangerous guy, but uh, ten life is hard to kill. So it's uh, I don't know. He's pretty safe at least. And then we have one last thing to show. It is one more package. Let me move my little tassel stamp off of it. And we get some... Uh, we get a... Uh, Bad... Badoti? Bado it's... Bedoity or Bedoli. I can't remember how it's spelled, I apologize. Uh, but he has a spider, 2-4. He does have an effect, but this one here is just kind of like an alt, or a, a full art, uh, kind of like collector card version of it. It does have the artist's sort of implanted signature there. Got your regular card back. Then we've got uh, a Sharmani. She just says thank you for backing the Kickstarter. Um, this is just a fun card. She is a um, an agent in disguise. She works with the Ugly Professor, and um, she sort of tricks some people. This was originally an Easter promo art, but now it's been kind of repurposed to being a thanks for supporting the Kickstarter. And the final thing here um, is... The, this was a cool thing that they gave just for, like, backing. Um, it's listed here. Uh, it's limited, numbered, but they were sort of, like, sample proofs of a couple of how the foiling would look on uh, some of the cards. When we first put in our order for how it would look, they told us, like, what part of the card do you want to be foil? And so, like, on this guy, you can tell he's, like, a big kind of dragon guy. He's got a big mouth here. And you're like, what if, like, his, like, scaly area was uh, foiled and his, like, neck sort of area wasn't? His teeth were foiled out. Uh, and so they sent us a sample of, like, what the spot foiling would look like. Um, and these were just included as kind of, like, random things within the, the Q 
kickstarted packages as kind of thanks and uh, historical pieces of the experience. We also had this one here. Uh, I can't remember what this one was. I think it's a guy like with, he's like swinging a sword, and this is like a sword flurry effect. I unfortunately don't remember exactly what this card was. But, oh, and then a fun thing with these here, the idea was that the, uh, the planets along the bottom would be foiled. So it's cool to see just sort of like the idea that we, uh, what that would look like. They were showing us the gold and the kind of rainbow foil. Uh, they're just fun little proofs. Anyway, that's it for the product included within my first arrival of kickstarted Tasso Showdown product, uh, the two-player starter deck. I will get my two boxes in a couple months, and I'll open that as well when the time comes. For now, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out Tasso Showdown. If you backed it, let me know. Um, if it interests you at all, we have extra boxes still that were printed. Um, so once those come in, they'll be on the website too, and you'll be able to pick up some of your own. Have a great rest of your day.